Let's take some time to talk about the four elements that are embodied in a brain smart start. The first activity or element, if you will, is an activity to unite. It takes scattered minds and disorganized bodies and it brings them together so we're all on the same page and can be a congruent whole. So we want to be a whole group that has a sense of safety so that I am able to learn and be the best that I can be. Now, in classrooms, many times this is the Pledge of Allegiance. It might be some type of chant. It might be some type of a song. Uh, It could be a call and response. Hey, 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 you, what do you say? Hey, hey. Whatever people are doing in unison, right? That is what an activity tonight is all about, getting everybody on the same page. The second element of a brain smart start is an activity to disengage the stress. Now, more than ever with COVID, we're all feeling a little stressed. And with stress comes cortisol. Cortisol is an enemy of learning. So we want to be able to release the cortisol from our body. And we want to increase the oxygen that gets to our brain so that we are prepared to learn. The best way to do that is with diaphragmatic breathing, also known as belly breathing. We want to make sure that we are always engaging that diaphragm. When we engage that diaphragm, we're also engaging the prefrontal lobes, which is where executive function lives. There is a metaphorical supernova highway from the diaphragm to the prefrontal lobes, As soon as that diaphragm begins to move and that oxygen moves up to those prefrontal lobes, the brain is ready to be engaged in learning. Without that diaphragm, we only have the ability to react. So we got to make sure that as adults, we're practicing belly breathing and we're teaching kids to do the same. We want to make sure that we get that oxygen in because oxygen is brain food. The third part of a brain smart start is our activity to connect. What we believe in conscious discipline is that relationships govern behavior. And when we have authentic relationships, those outside connections literally wire the brain for two things. One, a willingness to do things differently, a willingness to take risks, a willingness to be able to learn something that I never was able to do before. So the two elements that those outside connections literally wire the brain to do are willingness and also master the art of impulse control. Every time that we have kids stop and think before they do, that is self-regulation in action. Connection allows us to build those rich relationships. And what we know is that there's four components that can really up our relationship game. Whenever possible, you want to make sure that you're maintaining eye contact. You want to have some type of touch always tapping into emotional touch and skin-to-skin touch whenever possible. We also want to make sure we're present so that child feels seen and believed in. And we always want to add a little element of playfulness and fun so there's a playful situation. So those four elements, again, are eye contact, touch, presence, and playfulness. And finally, we're going to make a commitment. A commitment is a conscious goal. When we say that conscious goal or that commitment out loud, there is a higher probability that it is going to happen. We also want to make sure that when we make our commitment, we use language like, I'm going to. What we tend to do is use words like, I should. I should pick up my dry cleaning. I should. Hmm. We should all over ourselves. Instead of shooting all over yourself, 
you're going to spring into action when you make a commitment that sounds like this. Today, I'm going to pick up my dry cleaning. So we have an activity to unite. We have an activity to disengage the stress. We have an activity to connect. And we have an activity to commit to keeping ourselves and others safe and setting some goals.